टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट द पोस्ट ट्रांसक्रिप्शनल मॉडिफिकेशंस या पोस्ट ट्रांसक्रिप्शनल प्रोसेसिंग्स पोस्ट ट्रांसक्रिप्शनल प्रोसेसिंग्स और पोस्ट ट्रांसक्रिप्शनल मॉडिफिकेशंस इन केस ऑफ प्रोकैरियोट्स वी नो दैट देयर इज नो वेल बाउंड न्यूक्लियर मेम्ब्रेन सो ट्रांसक्रिप्शन एंड ट्रांसलेशन takes place simultaneously and the mrna molecule in case of pro prokaryotes undergoes little modification or no modifications because of the fact that this uh, transcription and translation in case of prokaryotes it takes place simultaneously so if we'll see but in case of when we talk about the eukaryotes in case of eukaryotes there is a well defined nuclear membrane and transcription takes place in the nucleus whereas translation takes place in the cytoplasm so this uh, mrna molecule or in primary or in a transcript it undergoes certain processing certain modifications what are called as post transcriptional modifications that means these are those modifications which take place after the after the after the transcription process so we can say that this uh, in case of if we'll talk about the in case of prokaryotes if we we'll see in in prokaryotes in prokaryotes this mrna molecule or an mrna molecule what is called as primary rna transcript it undergoes little or no modifications little ya yeah, no modifications in little or more no modification in case of primary mrna transcript this primary mrna transcript in prokaryotes undergoes little or no modifications because uh, there is no delimitation between the cytoplasm and nucleus in case of prokaryotes and this transcription and translation in case of prokaryotes it occurs simultaneously it would be like this for example if we'll take prokaryote e coli this is for example e coli this is we consider this or we consider this this is bacterial dna this is bacterial dna for example this is e coli obviously this is these are mrna transcripts mrna transcript this is mrna mrna transcript so here transcription and translation takes place simultaneously transcription and translation takes place simultaneously these are two sub units of ribosomes so this is what is called as mrna this mrna and these are the ribosomes 70s ribosomes these are simply ribosomes prokaryotic ribosomes ribosomes are protein synthesizing machines and it's called as polysome and that means polysome when several ribosomes get attached to a single mrna molecule that is called as polysome this is what is called as polysome that means these are simply ribosomes 
Arayı bursumuz. These are ribosomes. This is primary mRNA transcript. So we can say that in case of uh, in case of prokaryotes, this uh, primary mRNA transcript it undergoes little modifications in case of prokaryotes as transcription. This is transcription that is synthesis of RNA and translation synthesis of protein is it takes place simultaneously and another important thing is that there is no delimitation between the between the nucleus and cytoplasm as uh, there is no well developed well defined nuclear membrane in case of prokaryotes so this is what is called as when a cluster of these ribosomes are attached to a single mRNA uh, mRNA transcript we call it polysome so this is a polysome but in case of uh, but in case of eukaryotes when we talk about the eukaryotes this was regarding the prokaryotes in prokaryotes transcription and translation takes place simultaneously in transcription and translation it takes place simultaneously in case of prokaryotes this transcription and translation takes place simultaneously this is the transcription and translation in case of prokaryotes for example E. coli now when we talk about the eukaryotes in case of eukaryotes this uh, uh, primary mRNA transcript it undergoes several modifications and this uh, uh, this primary mRNA transcript it is known as heterogeneous nuclear RNA in case of eukaryotes so in case of when we talk about the eukaryotes when we talk about the eukaryotes in case of eukaryotes uh, this uh, primary mRNA transcript is known as heterogeneous nuclear RNA. Pre mRNA known as primary mRNA transcript, what is called as pre mRNA. It is known as it is known as heterogeneous nuclear RNA. Heterogeneous nuclear RNA. Why it is known as heterogeneous nuclear RNA? Because of the fact that this uh, pre mRNA molecule it contains. Uh, uh, it contains coding sequences and non-coding sequences. Coding sequences are called as exons and non-coding sequences are known as introns. Uh, so uh, these uh, primary mRNA transcript or pre-mRNA transcript in case of uh, prokaryotes, in case of sorry, eukaryotes is known as heterogeneous nuclear RNA as it contains both uh, coding sequences as it has both this heterogeneous nuclear RNA pre mRNA has both exons and introns. These exons are known as coding base sequences and introns are known as non coding base sequences. And this uh, uh, pre mRNA, also known as heterogeneous nuclear RNA, this uh, pre mRNA transcript in case of eukaryotes undergoes several modifications several processings and these are called as post transcriptional modifications or these are known as post transcriptional processings uh, some of the important uh, post transcriptional processings of mrna uh, molecule or f first is uh, uh, g capping this g capping it takes place g capping it takes place at the 5 dash end then we have got a tailing poly polyadenylation also known as tailing it takes place at 3 dash hydroxyl end of the mRNA then uh, the third one is splicing this is third one splicing then we have lost that is RNA editing we'll discuss these uh, uh, post transcriptional modifications of mRNA one by one
First we have G capping. This G capping, this G capping, what this G capping? It means that at the five dash end of the mRNA molecule, at the five dash end of the mRNA molecule, seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap is added. So G capping, also known as RNA capping, it is also known as RNA capping, and this uh, capping it occurs at the five dash phosphate end of the mRNA molecule. It occurs at five dash five dash phosphate end. It occurs at five dash phosphate end. of mRNA transcript it occurs at what this uh, G capping is that means at the 5 dash end of the primary mRNA transcript 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap is added 7 methyl gonosine Triphosphate cap is added. Triphosphate cap is added. It is called as it is simply written as seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap. This actually. Uh, this gonosine in this uh, gonosine at the position 7 this gonosine at the position 7 is methylated that is why it is called a 7 methylate gonosine cap and this uh, 7 methyl gonosine cap is added at the 5 dash phosphate end of the primary mRNA transcript and this uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap is added by by gonyl transferase it is by the enzyme gonyl transferase. This 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap is added at the 5 dash end of the mRNA molecule by an enzyme that is gonyl transferase. It's gonyl transfer. It would be like this. If we'll take, for example, this is our primary mRNA transcript this is primary mRNA transcript this is the 5 dash phosphate end and this 3 dash hydroxyl end this is 5 dash phosphate end and this is 3 dash hydroxyl end and what we will go for the RNA capping RNA capping this RNA capping takes place this RNA capping it takes place at the 5 dash end it takes place at the 5 dash end that means at the 5 dash end we have phosphate group free and what is added 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap is added it would be like this this represents methyl 7 methyl gonosine cap this is 7 methyl gonosine cap is added Obviously, in this, this is primary mRNA transcript. This primary mRNA transcript. What is this? This is primary pre mRNA transcript. Primary mRNA transcript. Obviously, there would be coding sequences. These are simply exons. These are exons and these are introns. Exon and intron. Exon and intron. Exon and intron. Then cyanomethylgonosine triphosphate cap 
is added to the 5 dash phosphate end of the primary mRNA transcript by the enzyme gonadal transferase. Now this uh, uh, actually this is a gonin nucleotide but uh, this gonin nucleotide has methyl group at the 7th position so it becomes 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap so we can say that uh, now the what is the importance of this uh, uh, this uh, cap 7 methyl gonosine cap first is importance that is protection this methyl 7 methyl gonosine cap 7 methyl gonosine cap it gives protection protection protects this 7 methyl gonosine cap it protects the M primary mRNA transcript from the attack of phosphatases phosphatases It protects from. It protects the primary mRNA transcript from the attack of phosphatases. Uh, thus, uh, this uh, uh, seven methyl gonosine cap it prevents the degradation of the the seven methyl gonosine. It prevents the degradation of primary mRNA transcript at the five dash end. So, this uh, seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it. It prevents the degradation of uh, of uh, this primary mRNA transcript at the five dash end. The second is that this uh, RNA cap, seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap, it is uh, it helps in the transport of the primary mRNA transcript from it helps in the transport of primary mRNA transcript from nucleus to the cytoplasm. In addition to this, 7 uh, uh, methyl gonosine triphosphate cap, untranslated regions, these are present in the mRNA, they also help in the transport of, uh, of this primary mRNA transcript from nucleus to the cytoplasm. We know that uh, this uh, RNA synthesis, that is transcription, it takes place in the nucleus and uh, then translation takes place in the cytoplasm. It becomes uh, necessary for, the, uh, for this uh, primary mRNA transcript to move from the nucleus to the cytoplasm so that it will get decoded. Uh, this, uh, this 7 methyl gonosine cap, it helps in the transport of uh, primary mRNA transcript from nucleus to the cytoplasm. So it helps in the transportation of transportation of of primary pre mRNA molecule. Then third one, third important function is that this uh, seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it helps in the formation of mRNA ribosome complex. It helps in the formation of mRNA ribosome complex. It helps in the formation of mRNA ribosome complex. It helps in the formation of formation of ribosome it helps in the formation of ribosome mRNA complex this uh, uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it helps in the attachment of mRNA molecule to the to the ribosome for the protein synthesis to take Place for the translation to occur. Actually, this uh, this seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap, the seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap, it um, the seven it, it recognizes this seven methyl gonosine triphosphate cap. It recognizes it identifies the 18s ribosomal uh, subunit of the. 18S ribosomal subunit of the large subunit of ribosome in case of prokaryote. So it recognizes what 18, right? This 7 methyl gonosine, this 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap. This it recognizes what it recognizes 18S ribosomal RNA of 
larger subunit of ribosome larger that is larger uh, it recognizes the 18s ribosomal subunit small uh, this uh, 18s ribosomal rna of smaller subunit of ribosome sorry smaller subunit of ribosome that is 40s of ribosome in prokaryotes it uh, recognizes the 18s ribosomal rna of smaller subunit that is 40s of ribosome in case of eukaryotes 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 so this uh, uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it helps in the ribosome in the formation of ribosome mrna complex Actually, this 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap of the mRNA, it recognizes, it identifies the 18S ribosomal RNA of a smaller subunit of ribosome in case of prokaryotes. We have two types of uh, subunits in case of, we have two types of subunits, for example, this is larger subunit of 40S subunit of uh, ribosome, this is 60s subunit of ribosome so this this uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap in case of in case of pre mrna it recognizes and identifies the and identifies the 18s ribosomal rna which is present in 14s subunit of ribosome in case of eukaryotes so this is the ribosome in case of this is called ats in case of Eukaryotes. This ribosome it is present in case of eukaryotes, while as 70s is present in case of prokaryotes. So this was regarding the G capping. This uh, G capping, how this G capping, also known as RNA capping, it takes place at the 5 dash phosphate end. It is this. What is this G cap? It is simply the um, gonosine which is methylated at the seventh position. So it becomes seven methylated. 7 methylated gonosine triphosphate cap. It is added to the 5 dash end of the pre mRNA transcript. And there is an enzyme that is called as gonyl transferase. And this enzyme it attaches, it joins the this uh, 7 methyl gonosine cap to the primary mRNA transcript. Then this 7 methyl gonosine cap it has certain significances one important significance is that it helps in the transport of the mRNA from nucleus to the cytoplasm another is that this uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it prevents the degradation of primary mRNA transcript uh, from the 5 dash end that means it prevents the this uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it prevents protects the mRNA transcript from the attack of phosphatases then we have Another important thing that this uh, uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it helps in the formation of ribosome uh, mRNA complex. Actually, this uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap it identifies it recognizes the 18S ribosomal RNA of Loris, 18S ribosomal uh, RNA of some other subunit of the ribosome in case of eukaryotes actually during the protein synthesis it is the this uh, primary mRNA transcript which attaches to the which first attaches to the uh, smaller subunit of the ribosome and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, gono 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap this g cap it helps in recognizing this uh, uh, smaller subunit of the ribosome in case of eukaryotes and uh, it recognizes what it recognizes it recognizes 18s ribosomal rna of the uh, smaller subunit of ribosome and then it forms the complex that is called as ribosome mrna complex and ultimately which gets involved in the protein synthesis then we have got another important uh, processing that is polyadenylation what is called as tailing so this was regarding the uh, g cap what is called as G capping, what is called as uh, 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate cap. Then, another important processing is
another important processing is that is polyadenylation. So I had what is called as tailing. Tailing. It is polyadenylation at the polyadenylation. Polyadenylation at three dash hydroxyl end. Then another important processing that is polyadenylation. Polyadenylation is simply called as tailing and this polyadenylation or tailing it takes place at the 3 dash uh, hydroxyl end of the primary mRNA transcript. Now what is called as this is called as poly A tail. There is an enzyme that is called as poly A polymerase. This poly A polymerase it adds approximately 200 to 300 adenosine residues at the 5 dash uh, at the 3 dash end of the primary mRNA transcript this uh, uh, poly tail what happens in case of so we have this polyadenylation what is called as polyadenylation What happens in case of polyadenylation? That means um, 200 to 300 adenosine residues are added to the 3 dash hydroxyl end of the primary mRNA transcript by the enzyme poly A polymerase. So it would be like this. We have here cell methylated gonosine cap is present here. So we have Introns. We have introns. We have introns. So at the in case of polyadenylation, that means addition of poly A tail, poly A tail by the poly A polymerase. This is. 5 dash end where 7 methyl gonosine triphosphate ca cap is added, and this is obviously 3 dash end, 3 dash hydroxyl end where poly A tail is added, tally will occur. That means here we have what we have adenosine residues, adenosine residues, adenylate residues. Approxi approximately 200 to uh, 200, these are this is called as poly A tail, this is called as polyethyl polyethyl and this polyethyl takes place at the 3 dash end of the 3 dash end of the mRNA transcript so this uh, polyadenylation means addition of adenylate yeah adenosine residues adenosine residues approximately 200 to 200 to 300 approximately 200 to 300 adenosine residues are added to the uh, 3 dash hydroxyl end of the primary mRNA transcript by the enzyme poly A polymerase poly A polymerase This uh, poly A polymerase enzyme this adds approximately 200 to 300 uh, endosine residues or adenylate residues at the 3 dash hydroxyl end of the primary mRNA transcript. This uh, formation of poly A tail at the 3 dash hydroxyl end of the primary mRNA transcript is known as tailing, and this tailing takes place at the 3 dash end of the primary mRNA transcript. Um, and this uh, is carried out by the enzyme poly A polymerase. This there is a special enzyme poly A polymerase which performs this activity. And now, what is the significance of this? Uh, uh, what is the significance of this tailing? This tailing, it uh, this poly A polymerase tail, it gives stability. It gives stability to the primary mRNA transcript. So we can say that it gives stability to primary mRNA transcript poly A tail poly A tail 
what is called as tailing it gives stability to the pre mrna it gives stability to pre mrna as the as the this primary primary mrna transcript it has to it has to change it has to change your shift from the nucleus to the cytoplasm so in order to get uh, in order to have an, in order to get adjustment in the new environment that means in the in the in the in the cytoplasm this uh, polytail it gives stability to the uh, primary mrna transcript in its new environment that means in the cytoplasm where the protein synthesis takes place uh, we in case of uh, we have one type of environment in the nucleus and another type of nuclear environment in the cytoplasm we know that this uh, transcription takes place in the nucleus and then this uh, mrna is transported to the cytoplasm to get adjustment in the new environment in the cytoplasm this uh, polyethyl gives stability to the primary and primary mrna transcript in the cytoplasm then we have got uh, this was regarding the polyethyl as it provides offer stability to the primary mrna transcript in the cytoplasm and then we have got splicing what is splicing the third point is splicing the third point is splicing this is splicing actually supplies means to join supplies means to join supplies what this what we must supply supplies means to join and in this uh, in this uh, step in splicing introns are removed and exons are joined that is means they are supplied exons are supplied they are joined with each other in case of uh, when we talk about the eukaryotes in case of eukaryotes the genes are split genes are split in case of eukaryotes and this split concept of genes it, they were, it was discovered by robert and sharp it was discovered two centuries split genes in case of eukaryotes were discovered by two centuries this were robert and sharp the split genes in a case of eukaryotes were discovered by split genes in case of uh, eukaryotes were discovered by robert and sharp they said that uh, in case of uh, genes in case of eukaryotes we have got two types of uh, sequences coding sequences coding base sequences and non coding base sequences coding base sequences coding sequences base sequences are called as exons and non coding sequences are called as introns so during splicing during this process during this step what happens introns are removed and exons are joined this is what is called as splicing that would it would be like this we have here we have five dash and we have five dash seven methyl guanosine tri triphosphate cap obviously it is it is present at the five dash end then we have got what polyethyl polyethyl and it is at the three dash end 
this is polyethyl this is polyethyl and these introns are removed these are introns introns these are introns introns and there is a complex what are called as small nuclear ribonuclear proteins what are called as spliceosome this is spliceosome it helps in the removal of introns these are spliceosome this spliceosome it helps in the removal of these introns and then joining of exon this is exon this is exon exon so these are exons are joined together are called as coding segments coding sequences so this is what is called as uh, splicing in case of splicing uh, introns introns remote exons and exons and adjacent exons are is joined these exons joined and these exons are joined and then these exons are are sealed by means of enzyme that is called as RNA ligase exons sealed by RNA ligase this uh, these introns are removed and exons are joined uh, by means of a complex that is called a spliceosome spliceosome this spliceosome it is it is a complex of small it is formed of small nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles small nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles and it is called a synapse these this spliceosome it is composed of small nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles what are usually called as synapses they help in the removal of these introns 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 and then uh, joining or yeah, splicing of these uh, adjacent exons so that in the in the functional mrna this is what is called as this where the primary mrna transcript pre mrna this is what is called as functional mrna functional mrna that means this rna is now ready for the for the translation it's functional and in the functional mrna in case of eukaryotes uh, no introns are present but only we have what exon is coding sequences so these are called as uh, this is what is called as spliceosome so some that is small nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles and then these exons are joined by the enzyme that is rna ligase then we have got this this was the regarding the uh, regarding this uh, splicing now we have got uh, next is rna editing and we have got uh, now we have got rna editing what do you mean by rna editing in case of uh, this uh, primary uh, this primary mrna transcript certain uh, nucleotides certain nucleotides are are uh, edited certain nucleotides are deleted and also substitution of the nucleotides takes place so we can say that for example rna editing can be of two types it can be in case of rna editing the nucleotide sequence the nucleotide sequence of this 
of the primary mRNA transcript is different from that of the functional mRNA because in the primary mRNA transcript uh, there occurs editing. This editing can be of two types. Either there is a addition of nucleotides, there is deletion of nucleotides, uh, there can also be the substitution of the nucleotides. So it can be of two types. One is called as it can be substitution editing. This RNA editing can be of two types. This can be substitution editing and it can be insertion or deletion editing insertion or deletion editing what I mean to say is that what I mean to say is that the nucleotides are substituted for example uh, nucleotide substitution takes place nucleotide substitution takes place for example if in a pre mRNA this is pre mRNA this is 5 dash end this is 3 dash end for example we have a nucleotide G this G will get replaced by C this is pre mRNA in case of pre mRNA for example we have got at one location we have got nucleotide G gonosine and that will get in the functional mRNA that would be that would get substituted by C this is functional mRNA so we can say that there is a substitution of G can be substituted by C yeah, C can be substituted by G same is the case with A can be substituted by U U can be substituted U can be substituted by a. So this uh, these types of substitutions can take place in the pre mRNA. So that in the functional mRNA, the nucleotide sequence would be uh, a little bit different from that from that of the uh, from that of the pre mRNA or primary mRNA transcript. Well, in case of RNA editing, uh, this insertion or deletion editing, uh, addition addition of addition of nucleotides takes place to pre mRNA or or sometimes mm, deletion yeah subtraction of nucleotides takes place to pre mRNA that means addition of nucleotides addition of nucleotides or addition of nucleotides to pre mRNA occurs or subtraction or subtraction of nucleotides or subtraction of nucleotides from pre mRNA occurs so this is what is called as RNA editing so in case of RNA editing in case of RNA editing what happens the uh, this is uh, for example for example this is primary mRNA transcript in this primary mRNA transcript there is uh, a particular nucleotide sequence and in RNA editing this uh, nucleotide sequence is a little bit altered it is changed how it is changed it can be changed by two ways by means of uh, uh, what is called RNA editing so that means it can take place by substitution editing or it can take place by means of insertion deletion editing that means the nucleotide sequence of pre mRNA is a little bit different from the functional from the functional mRNA so in case of uh, what happens in case of this uh, uh, substitution substitution editing what happens in case of substitution editing uh, for example uh, we have got in case of primary mRNA transcript we have got gonosine that would get replaced by cytosine same is the case we have got adenosine that would get replaced by uracil in case of functional mRNA so we can say that uh, the nucleotide sequence of the primary mRNA transcript and functional mRNA it is a little bit altered or changed to some extent nor not uh, to a great extent but a little bit it is uh, changed then we have got insertion or deletion editing that means uh, the nucleotides are actually removed from the primary mRNA transcript or nucleotides are actually added to the primary mRNA transcript so that uh, for example uh, this is 
दिस इज प्राइमरी एमआरएन ट्रांसक्रिप्ट इन द प्राइमरी एमआरएन ट्रांसक्रिप्ट फॉर एग्जांपल जी इज एडिट टू अ सर्टेन लोकेशन दैट इज व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज इंसर्शन और फॉर एग्जांपल सी इज रिमूव्ड फ्रॉम दिस प्राइमरी एमआरएन ट्रांसक्रिप्ट सो इट बिकम्स डिलीशन एडिटिंग दैट मींस द न्यूक्लियोटाइड सीक्वेंस ऑफ द फंक्शनल एमआरएन वुड बी अ लिटिल बिट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट ऑफ द प्री एमआरएन या प्राइमरी एमआरएन ट्रांसक्रिप्ट this was regarding the post transcription processings or post transcription modifications in case of this uh, eukaryotes thanks